I want us to uh, read um, the book of Ecclesiastes. <laughs> you know, Ecclesiastes. Okay, chapter three, the verse number one. A Solomon, the most wisest man that ever lived, uh, gave us an oracle that is very powerful. And it is a very powerful principle. If you understand it, it will help you in this life. He said that to everything, there is a season. Everything, there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. You see, if you don't understand this concept in life, it will be very difficult for you to do, in life, uh, to do well in life that there is time you do everything under the sun god have apportioned times for certain things you see uh, but i want to read the verse 8 he said a time to love a time i want to talk about the time to love and the time to love is when to enter into a relationship now i was uh, i asked the warriors one day that when do you think you should uh, it is the age to enter into a relationship and one boy said that some of them say 18 and some of them were saying 16 you know uh, but i want you on i want you to understand that you don't enter into a relationship because you feel you should enter into a relationship because you see you don't go to the university because you feel you should go to the university <laughs> you have to go through process you go to you go to the uh, lower primary upper primary you write your bc i'm talking about ghana you write your bc you write your wasi and pass and qualify to the university before you are admitted to the university so it's not because you feel you should go to the university then you are allowed to go to the university no you have to qualify there is a process you have to go through so you don't uh, enter into a relationship because you feel you should enter into a relationship and you have to understand that uh, we don't have a particular age like chronological age where you should enter or when you should enter into a relationship now you enter into a relationship when you are matured enough maturity the, the word maturity on the line but let me digress a little bit one of the things you have to understand is that according to my father bishop dag he said that the longest you should stay in a relationship is two years and according to dr otabel it is 18 months the, the, the longest you should stay in a relationship before you enter into marriage is two years or 18 months and the reason is that if you don't take care you will do what you don't want to do because the moment you enter into a relationship you have a Expose yourself to the danger of fornication. So if you are not going to marry within two years or 18 months, you have no business entering into a relationship because you expose yourself to fire. And Solomon said that no one can put fire in his bosom without being burnt. A lot of people, a lot of people have destroyed their Christian lives. A lot of Christians have lost their virginity both male and females have lost their virginity a lot of people have uh, lose their purity because of timing when to enter into a relationship is very 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 significant is very very important because you see we can we can't send somebody who just complete uh, completed ghs to the university because the the learning and the syllabus at the university will be too big Will be too big for his intellectual capacity the pressure there he will not be matured enough to take you see so there are some people like somebody in the shs and even some people at the university you can't really take you can you can't really take the pressure and the demands of relationship if you don't take care if you don't take care the pressure and the demands and the challenges that relationship bring will destroy your christian life and what i mean by will destroy your christian life is that you will do what you don't want to do you find yourself fornication 
you find yourself kissing a lot you see a lot of people it is a, a, a relation they really fear god they want to live for god but they started sinning in relationships what they don't want to do that is what they did because the moment is the proximity between the opposite sex when a man get uh, gets closer to a woman that's what you call this chemistry attraction like it is said uh, by psychologists that whenever two members of the opposite sex relate closely to a uh, sexual feelings will inevitably be aroused which means that uh, when uh, when a brother or a sister start talking in the morning they start talking in the evening start talking in the afternoon by the if you do that for like three months by the time you come to yourself you begin to feel something for the person you begin to feel sexually attracted to the person so if this thing is is like if this thing is going like beyond two years you will do what you don't want to do. Not, not even two years. Some, they can't, they can't stand it. And one of the things you have to understand is that before you even enter into a relationship, you have to check your, 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 your strength, your emotional strength. Because some people, they, they easily give up emotionally. They easily give, give in. They are not, when it comes to uh, their sexuality, they, they are not strong. The ability to control their libido is not there. They don't really, even though they fear God, but they don't really have that tenacity to control themselves. Because some people, before they, beca they became Christians, they were says maniac before they became Christians. And you see, the very sin, right? The very sin that you were into in the world, when you come to Christ, you have to watch out. Because if you don't watch out, the same thing will drag you back to the world. Because you are susceptible and prone to those things. You have a predirection and you have an inclination or a tendency towards those things. So, you know, the, the time you enter into a relationship is very, very important. Now, uh, Kevin Annan said something. He said that to be familiar with the member of the opposite sex and to keep chastity requires a greater virtue than to bring a, a dead man back to life let me unpack it for you it means that when a brother and a sister gets together they come close they, they start talking in the morning talking in the evening talking in, in in the afternoon and you know they relate the anointing each one of them needs to control himself or herself without committing sexual sin should be stronger than the anointing for the resurrection of the dead because you see, last eh, this body, like I was saying yesterday, you are born again, but your body is not born again. Under your belt, there is no anointing. Under the belt, there is no anointing. And you see, eh, the Bible said that eh, do not put the Lord your God to test. A lot of us we put our the Lord our God to test. What do I mean by that? We expose ourselves to unnecessary temptations and unnecessary, you know, pressure one of the things you have to understand one of the things you have to understand is that you know a lot of christians most christians don't fall into sexual sins because they are not prayerful or because uh, they don't fast or read the word but they fall into sexual sin because of lack of vigilance vigilance so if you were a brother you see if you were a brother if you're a brother under the sun under the sun if you're in the secondary school please that one put it don't even think about it it is a no-go area at the university first year second year third year even fourth year because you see in our nation because of the economic situation when you complete the university or you are in your uh, your final year and then you complete the university right you complete the university and you do your national service for one year and then you look for a job you look you, you look for a job to establish yourself and then gather yourself get get an accommodation you know try and buy some few things and put some monies together before you be able to you know marry and then when you marry you see when i married i've been married for like like six years and i've realized that you see when you are outside marriage when you are not in the marriage is different when you get into marriage is also different marriage is full of responsibilities 
you're going to pay a light bill, water bill, house rent. You're going to take care of the, the kids, their school fees. So if uh, their school is not in the vicinity, you have to send them to school somewhere. You know, their transportation, driving them up and down. If, you're not going, if you don't drive and if the school have a school bus, you have to pay what they will eat before you even put some money, some money aside to get the land and put up a building. So you see, marriage is full of responsibility. That's why I always say that marriage is not for boys, it's for men. That's why the Bible, Moses didn't say, they force are a boy. He said, they force are a man. So even university level 400, majority of the time, it is not advisable. I want to say it again. You see, watch your relationship more. The longest you can spend in relationship is two years or 18 months and the reason one reason is if you don't take it you will do what you don't want to do i was listening to my father bishop dag he said that when he was in relationship with mommy he said that at a point the lord told him to marry and it's like he was delaying and mind you listen mind you their generation is even different from our generation in the sense that in their generation they didn't have the mobile phones they didn't have the whatsapp they didn't have the facebook they didn't have the twitter and the instagram but in our generation, you know, proximity is so intense because you can reach your sweetheart no matter where she is. What's up with her every day? Talk with her on phone. And you see, the more you talk to somebody, the more you WhatsApp with somebody, it stirs your emotions. The more you talk on phone. And that is why I just think, if you don't have any intention of marrying somebody, the opposite says, stop, you see, stop talking to the person every day. Some, some people can stand on the phone. They can stay on the phone for hours. The more you talk to the opposite says, it stirs a chemistry for the person. If you talk to somebody in the morning, afternoon, evening, the morning, afternoon, and evening, you do that for about two months. By the time you come to yourself, you develop an emotion for the person. So daddy said that the Lord was telling him to marry and then he was delaying. And one day he had a dream. And in the dream is like he, he was supposed to bath, but he was reluctant and delaying. But by the time he realized he was undressing people were he was undressing and he was undressing while people were around so when he got up he was contemplating on the dream and the lord said i've told you to marry you won't and you 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 will disgrace yourself and you will see then he so he said quickly he married and mind you listen to me mind you if you if you're in a relationship with somebody right and you want to marry and then you sleep with a person before the marriage you open a door for evil spirit to attack your marriage because you lay the foundation of the marriage on the devil let me digress a little bit every relationship if you really want to see success or the light of god or the light you want to see light in your marriage you have to be very careful run your relationship with the word of god running your relationship with the word of god means you have to make sure you obey the word of god the word of god see that shall not commit fornication so you respect god and his word in your relationship if you want god to stay in your marriage you have to you have to respect him in your relationship if you don't respect god in your you see it is so funny how christians most of the time don't want to listen to god don't want to obey god in our relationship but yet we want to bring our weddings and our marriages to church for god to bless it it is it is, it is very funny the same god you are putting out the same god you are leaving as if you don't need in your relationship you are expecting him to bless you in your marriage which is which is which which is which is very very uh excuse my language which is very funny so what i want to tell you as a young person as a young person or as a man if you're really serious if you're really serious with your ministry and with your spiritual life the time and when to enter into a relationship is very very important so solomon said that there is time for everything there is time for he said there is he said, to everything, there is a season and every time to every purpose under the sun. So there is time for everything. You must know the time. When you read the book of Chronicles, the Bible said that the sons of Issachar, they were men that have understanding in the times and in the seasons. And they know what Israel ought to do at any particular point in time. Because of that, all their brothers were at their command. 
So if you don't understand timing, you get yourself into trouble. We have time and season. You see, every season have what you can plant. There are some seasons, if you plant maize, you will not harvest anything. So you have to understand, when you have to enter into a relationship, you enter into a relationship when you are fully matured. What do I mean by fully matured? Like I, I, I was saying initially, chronological maturity, eh? like I am 30, I am 40, that is not what makes you matured. Because somebody can be 30 years, can be 40 years, and the person is not. Somebody can be and the person is not matured now let me go back to the book of genesis before god will bring a wife to adam adam was already occupied with something adam was having a garden so you see before you even think of proposing proposing to somebody you must think of a career you must have a vision a vision uh, maybe uh, even if you are not working now maybe i know that by the next two years or one year i will have something solid because in our tradition in our tradition as black people in our tradition as black people when you marry or if you marry as as a man the woman will come and stay with you so you are rather going to accommodate the woman even though when the two of you marry you are going to contribute your partners means you are going to serve each other financially and whatever the initial major financial commitment you are, is the man who is going to make it so you have to make sure you have a vision who will be beer or nine is before you even think about relationship life is systematic is a systematic process and systematic approach one thing at a time one thing after the other oh, there are some there are, there, are, there are some people the person is 30 years i was saying something the person is 30 years still living under the roof of the mother you are still living under the roof of your mother and on top of that you don't have uh, uh, maybe a technical university certificate you don't have a training college certificate you don't have a university certificate and apart from that so even if he doesn't have a university certificate or whatever he doesn't have any career he, he have never learned any skill the person have never learned any trade so if you have never learned any skill and any trade but you are 30 you have no business entering into a relationship some people and uh, some people are shs graduates right shs graduate you are still writing off deck still trying to as a, a young man you are still trying to find uh, find your feet so you may think oh, i'm 27 uh, because i'm 27 i can enter into a relationship brother you are 27 but still in life socially your social status is not good you don't have anything going for you because when you marry you're going to have a responsibility towards your wife towards your in-laws and towards your children so if you don't have any source of income, a solid source of income, you don't have any business proposing to anyone. So the first thing, the first thing you have to consider before even thinking about a relationship that I have something solid. Adam was having a garden before the Lord will bring Adam a wife. And number two, number two maturity is mental maturity. <laughs> listen let me let me let me strike this philosophical uh, dichotomy there is uh, intellectual maturity and mental maturity uh, i may be wrong but i believe that intellectual maturity is somebody who have gone to the university or have gone to school or have read a lot and and it is he is very apt have a lot of knowledge you see but there's a distinction between knowledge and wisdom some people are read they are well read they are very knowledgeable but they are shallow minded they are one step logic or yet in your mass they think naively they think myopically you know they, they are not logical thinkers there are a lot of but, but marriage you see marriage is for logical thinkers somebody who is a deep thinker because you are going to make quality decisions 
And the reason why you're going to make quality decision is that as a man, your the decision you will make will affect your children. The decision you will make is going to affect your 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 wife. Th that decision is going to affect your wife and going to affect their children because, like we said, the man is the head of the house. When you say the man is the head of the house, it's like the head of a train. So the head of the train control all the coaches. You are the you you are you are the leader of the house. So you either lead the the, the 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 house into progress or you lead the house into poverty. You either lead the house into prosperity or you lead the house into frustration. So mental maturity. Somebody who is a deep thinker, you are a smart thinker. It's very, very important. You have to consider that before you even think about entering into a relationship. Some people they behave like kids. Even though he's 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 uh is is educated right maybe he's a doctor a lawyer an engineer have a fat salary but he behaved like a child what do i mean by he behaved like a child the level of his thinking he can easily let things go he's so vindictive you know the way he goes about things is it it's some way but if you are like that you can't make a home so you need what you call mental maturity and another thing you need what you call emotional maturity because life is full of pressure. Life is full of challenges. So if you're not emotionally mature, you, you, you easily break under pressure. Now, a lot of young people, a lot of men and women think that a hey, relationship is just about romance. <laughs> I've been saying this, you see, no matter how long the night is, you woke up and face the morning. You are, you, listen, let me be frank with you and blunt. You see, you are not going to have sex 24-7. So no matter how beautiful, voluptuous, and titillating and tantalizing the woman is, that is not what is going to keep the marriage. Because you have to you have to pay the bills. You have to your accommodation or whatever. And it takes tenacity. It takes it takes innovation, creativity, ingenuity to 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 to, 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 to you know keep up with all these things. So emotional maturity is very, very, very important. A lot of people are not emotionally matured. A lot of people are not emotionally matured. They easily break under pressure. They, 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 they easily, you know, break loose. They, they easily get angry. Listen to me. Let me say it is in, in this in three. I will say it in English. Okay? Say obi oh. on. Say, oh, accommodation. We are a doctor. If you have an accommodation, you are a doctor, you are a lawyer, you have a car, you have a, a fat salary, right? That does not mean you are ready for marriage. The basic thing that makes you ready for marriage is character. The ability to endure things. So if you are a doctor, lawyer, engineer, whatever, and you have accommodation and you have a fat salary, but you don't have, you, 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 you can't hold your temper. You are so, you are so, uh, uh, you, you are so, how do I put it? You are so odious. You easily get irritated. You easily get agitated. You easily get infuriated. You easily lose your temper. You are full of yourself. You are domineering. You are not ready for marriage because when you marry, the woman is, is going to be miserable. A lot of men are so, uh, they are too domineering. Too, too, too domineering. You know, they, they, they are too bossy. You know, if you do that, when you marry, your wife is going to be miserable. Because your wife is not your apprentice. Your wife is your partner. If you respect a woman, you love a woman, honor a woman, and then uh, and, 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 and then you, you, you reverence a woman and cherish a woman, your, your house is going to be like heaven and earth. Heaven on earth. So one of the things, emotional maturity, you have emotional intelligence, no matter what will happen, no matter the offense, you are able to handle it. And another thing is what you call spiritual maturity, spiritual maturity. And one emotional maturity is this, before I go to the spiritual maturity, before you enter into a religion, one emotional maturity is that you have the ability to control your libido. Is he... So, let me say it in you. You have no business entering into a relationship. Entering into a relationship 
without the ability to control your libido if your libido is uh, is on autopilot mm, entering into a relationship without the ability to control your libido is like you are driving a car and the car is without brakes you you will crash so if you want to enter into a relationship you must know that i can emotionally when it comes to my sexuality i'll be able to control myself if you're not able to control yourself when it comes to sex you're not able to to downplay your sexual feelings you are not able to grip your emotions when you enter into a relationship you do what you don't want to do a lot of christians have committed abortions christian brothers have committed abortions with christian sisters is it this this thing is very 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 important you see if you don't if you know you can't control your sexual feelings that that emotional strength you are not matured at that facet or at that area of your life you have no business entering into a relationship build yourself emotionally develop the ability to control yourself before you enter into a relationship either than that you end up doing what you are not supposed to do you end up sleeping with a person and when you do that you expose demons into your life you see a lot of a lot of christians ladies christian brothers a lot of them pay their relationship eh? pay their relationship they have mixed god you can't choose you can't choose a woman over god you can't choose a man over god but most of them because of lack of self-control and lack of vigilance their their relationship with their partners have destroyed the relationship they have with god so you have to be very very careful you look at this emotional maturity the ability to control my sexuality the ability to control myself i can be in a relationship with this lady practically for like one year for two years without doing anything with him no no it's not just imagination that i think but practically you know you look at the way your emotions are before you enter into a relationship with the person then this the the, the 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 fourth or the fifth one is the spiritual maturity you see hmm. spiritual maturity simply means the fruit of the spirit because you see marriage will test your spiritual maturity you may say you are a christian it is when you marry that is where you will see whether you are a christian or not the ability to control your temper the ability to overlook things the ability to stay in peace with your wife the ability to respect your wife to honor your wife even when he have she have done something he's not supposed to do that is that is that's is what we call spiritual maturity you are matured spiritually you can pray because listen what the devil hates five things he hates joy where there is joy the devil don't want to he do, he doesn't want a place where there is joy so he will fight it he will fight it number two unity he dislikes unity where there's unity there is progress he said where there's unity there's tranquility where there's tranquility there is progress so because of that he will fight where he will fight it and then where uh, he doesn't like where there is love he doesn't doesn't like where there is joy you people are happy together get together he doesn't like it and he's going to he's going to fight it going to fight it so because of that you have to be spiritually strong that's why you can't you see don't marry somebody who is not spiritually strong and he's not ready to be helped you know there are some people now they may not be able to pray at the level where you can pray but he's ready to be helped right so now you have to also think about spiritual maturity so you look at all these levels before you think about proposing to somebody now another thing you can consider you see listen to me my brothers listen your integrity is very important one of the things you have to be very careful about don't listen don't open your mouth to propose to anyone i repeat don't open your mouth to propose to anyone if you are not really 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 sure you are going to marry the person if you don't joke uh, you can't use women like microphone testing mic one two no don't do that if you don't take a 
you 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 swear your integrity you destroy your integrity you have to you see hold you you see value your integrity your integrity is one of your greatest weapon and i want to i'm talking to you like this because i wish in my 20s somebody have spoken to me like this before you see before 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 you open your mouth to propose to a sister make sure you are fully convicted in your spirit before you propose and that is why you see let me let me let me digress a little bit there is a distinction between dating and courtship dating is when you are studying the person you've never told you've not told the person anything so it's like you are in level 400 or uh you have completed the university and then you've seen somebody you think the person is is the person is beautiful the person is attractive what you have to do is that you have to make the person your friend and one thing is now bef before even getting closer to somebody before proposing the first on the list what you have to do read the person from head to toe mm? look at the person the nose the eyes whatever the shape whatever whether you like it because you see the feelings you have it is god that put it there you can't marry somebody you don't have a chemistry for you can't marry somebody who is not beautiful to you so you have to even consider the physical appearance before even praying and before even thinking about the person the physical appearance is the first on the list but that is not the most important it is the first on the list but that is not the most important so you have seen you have seen somebody right you see somebody you just make the person your friend don't tell the person anything make the person your friend and then analyze the person analyze the person you can invite the person to a program right you invite the person to a program or you can take the person to a restaurant you can take the person out and then you talk with the person you analyze the person you study the person and pray so before you will open your mouth before you open your mouth to tell the person you will marry her or you love her then you are fully convicted in your spirit conviction is what you call the inner witness you are so much at peace within you make sure you have prayed enough you see if god tells you to marry somebody god will never change his mouth he, he, that god does not go back on his word his word is set told in heaven so if you take time the reason why a lot of people right say oh god said Oh, I'm convicted, but later, then they start, you know, like it's like they are shaking in the eye. It's like they don't really take time to listen to God. You have to really, you see, if you don't take your time to listen to God, and you must develop what we call supernatural sensitivity, the ability to hear the voice of God clearly. But the point is that, you see, God does not rush. So if you rush, you go in for the wrong person. You just have to take your time, relax, make the person your friend. Don't say anything, and then pray, pray, pray. No matter how you feel towards the person, you see, look beyond your feeling. You can see somebody, and the person is very, very attractive. You can see somebody; it's like you feel so much towards the person. But look beyond your feeling. Because if you rush, you go in for the wrong person. Look beyond your feel, feeling, pray. And one of the things you can even do as a young person, a young man of God or a young Christian, one of the things you can do is to even show the person to your matured friends. You see, this one is very, very important in life. Mm? In life. If you rob your little mind with great minds in life, if you connect yourself to great heads, it, it's very, very important. It is going to help you. You see, if you help, you get strategic, mature people around you who help you to make quality decisions. This is going to help you. You see, you've seen a lady you think you are interested in. Show her to your mature friends. You've not told her anything, but you, you are introducing her to your mature friends and tell them, you know, without her knowledge, 
tell them that this is the lady I've seen. I want you to help me in prayer and make sure your friends get to know her. And then when your friends give you advice, majority of the time, the point is that when we are giving advice, we don't sit down and think through the advice to its logical conclusion. Whenever somebody is telling you something, what I do when somebody is telling me something, I sit down and think about what the person is saying. Is it, forget about your emotions. Forget about what you feel. And you see, you must always associate yourself with people who look at you in the eye and tell you the truth. These are the people that love you. There are some people, they don't want to hurt your feelings, so they don't tell you the truth. But, but you see, you not uh, wanting to, uh, uh, you know, hurt the person's feelings, so you avoid telling the person the truth, you won't tell the person, will eventually hurt the person eventually at the long run is going to hurt the person so you make sure that person is hurt now than to hurt forever so uh, you know let your your, your your matured friend see the person and then your spiritual father you see everybody mm, everybody should have a good matured spiritual father like eli eli is a very good spiritual father when someone had god calling him Somehow thought it was Eli who was calling him. And then he went to Eli. Eli said, no, I have not called you. Then, so go and sleep. So he, the Lord called him again the second time. The third time. Then Eli said, mm, God is calling this child. So now, what do you have to do? Go and lie down and say speak for thy servant hear it so it means that eli gave someone a godly counsel if you were a young minister or you were a young man and you know that your way is far you are going to be great when it comes to the issue of a life partner you have to be very circumspect please take it easy take your time calm your emotions down don't be attracted to the person because the person can sing don't be attracted to the person because the person is is have a very good physical appearance. He can sing, she can sing, it's all right. She have good physical appearance, it's all right. Uh, or you will taste. The person is your taste. When you look at the specs, you look at the physical appearance, you have the stand chart and have the backlist and all that. Fine, it's good. But then if you are really serious with your life, you have to understand that you are going to marry beauty but stay with character stay with ingenuity stay with creativity if 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 you marry a woman listen to me no matter how beautiful the woman is no matter uh, how the form the shape you know a lot of Ghanaian women like um, a lot of Ghanaian men like women who have calves and have sheep Japanese nose, Arabian lips. I don't see, I didn't see that kind of thing. It's not good. But ask yourself a question that you see, aside the Japanese nose, Arabian lips, and the form, what does the person really have? Because what is really going to help you to build your family and to push the family forward is not the physical appearance, it's what the person have on the inside what the person have a lot of we you see a lot of especially black women a lot of black women right a lot of black women are programmed to think that they have to be taken they have to be taken care of by men so because of that bibrina almost most of them are not productive they don't want to do anything with their life they are not hunters every woman should be a hunter what i mean by a hunter is that you must you must be creative you must be innovative you should find something to do you see if 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 you have you a woman and then you have been to invest in the government have no have no employed you you don't have a job you should be able to do something because when you marry, it is not the woman, it is not the man alone that is supposed to contribute. Because if it is the man alone who is supposed to contribute, the man is going to look down on you. You will not be respected. It's not just the physical appearance. Because listen to me. Now, when you marry and then you, you, you stay with your wife for some time, at the point you even be naked before and then you not feel like the way you used to feel for her. You know, when you are in a relationship, you can... It, 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 and then the person come and visit you to sleep over. You need the Holy Ghost 
you need a virgin mary you need all the angels in heaven to be able to control yourself to be able to control yourself <laughs> it will be very difficult and don't try it but then when you marry and then you stay with the person under the same roof sometimes the person sometimes the person is there you even forget that there is a, a woman lying by you so you see and so you have to you have to be very you have to be very very you have to be very 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 you know very very judicious and circumspect when it comes to choosing a woman which is very very don't just don't just open your mouth to propose like I, like I, I was saying initially make sure you are convicted deep down within that this woman I'm going to marry her and then make sure you've sought for godly counsel before you tell her and then when you tell her give her time to pray about it and make sure she's fully convinced and convicted do you see don't force love out of anybody don't force anybody to marry you make sure the person genuinely have heard from god make sure the persons love you because marriage is a long journey marriage is a long journey so this is my short advice for the young men please before i repeat before you open your mouth to tell somebody i love you i will marry you you make sure you are fully convicted make sure you are fully convicted make sure you know what you are doing make sure you will marry the person don't propose to this one you break and propose to another one you break it, it, it will not help you it will not help your integrity so if you have an emotional problem it's like you easily fall in love please take it easy before may the lord bless you may the lord uh, favor you if you have some questions i want to uh, i want to if you have questions you can inbox me or if you have questions you can whatsapp whatsapp me or if you have uh, if you have a request a topic you want me to elaborate or talk about you can write it in the comment or you can inbox me and i'm going to do a video on that may the lord bless you may the lord favor you i pray that with this wisdom nuggets the lord will help you to make quality and right decisions so you will not mess up your life may the lord bless you and may the lord favor you amen a patch of say on subscribe to this channel subscribe and hit it bell notification We are now I like it. Now we wait your comment. Oh, now go point show.